I think the memory project started a long time ago, when I was a child. I can remember looking through boxes of photographs, and there were very, very few photographs of my parents' family. In that was a, a photo of her brother, Kalma. Kalman was about three years, three, three and a half years younger than me. A very good looking little boy, very good boy. Although he always wanted to prove to the teacher that she's not right and he's right. That photograph, I think he was four and a half, four, four and a half. I must have been seven, so he was like four. When I was a kid, I always thought that I would be able to find Kalma somehow, that I would be able to bring him back to my mother. It was, it was a fantasy of mine to somehow bring a piece of my mother's lost past back to her. I don't remember the date, but I saw him like a Saturday. And Monday, we were taken to, to, to camp. I mean, the young people were taken, sent away to a concentration camp. And I never heard or knew about him no more, nothing about him. I don't have memories of the actual person, but I have memories of the stories of that person. And I put that together with the photograph that I have. And there's some kind of composite that comes out of the memory of the story and the photograph, and then the interweaving of the planes when I'm painting and the movement of the light and texture. And there's something tangible that comes out of that. There's a feeling. I'm imagining, okay. It's, it is about imagining, after all. Constructing. So many possibilities. There's a connection between memory and the creative process. And through the creative process, you can help recapture memories because there's a lot unconscious, both in the process of painting and in one's psyche. You build and you build and you build and you destroy and you find a plane and lose a part of the head and rediscover where it is in space. Yes. And during the process, you feel a curve of a head. You find a cheek in space. You see where the head stands on its axis. Suddenly the form feels real. I know that my parents, my grandparents, my uncles, and then my sister went from the ghetto, from Warsaw ghetto, went to the death. Also, I don't know the day. But when I was growing up, you always thought that maybe your brother survived. I still would think like maybe, but it's not, not so. Because if he would have survived, we would have found each other. That's for sure. So many years is now, 60 something years. The first time when I wanted to escape from the ghetto, that was a train, like a trolley, was going through the ghetto. So me and my brother went there. And we passed through the ghetto, but before we went on the other side, out of the ghetto, a German with a policeman, Polish policeman, came into that train, checked, and they said, all you, they're out. And my brother didn't go, and some kids went and some kids didn't go. And he was sitting next to me. And then the policeman came over, or the German, I don't remember, and took him out. So I followed him. I didn't want to, I wanted to see what happens. So I followed him. And that was on the border of the ghetto and, and the not ghetto. And it, there was like a booth 
this was a German and a policeman at the booth. And he started to, the Germans started to hit my brother. And I started to beg with him and to talk to him. Don't hit him, hit me, because he's a little boy, he's a little child. And uh, he started to get angry, but he probably touched him someplace, because he said, threw us out from the boot room, back to the ghetto. We were running, and I lost one shoe. I didn't have the shoe more. So this was the first time when I wanted to escape. I myself probably would go, be able to go through. But with my brother, he looked Jewish. I didn't look Jewish. So I went back into the ghetto. We both were lucky because the other children were, were taken to, to this police station. And then I don't know what happened to the other ones. My mother's brother, Kalma, we think, died when he was about 15 years old. I don't know if my brother went with all the Jews, or if he went that voluntarily, or the person that he was working for sent him out, or, or he remained someplace in the woods or someplace, I don't know. Kalma was the last person who my mother saw in her family. For several reasons, she thought that Kalma might still be alive. If there was anyone in the family who survived, it would have been Kalma. He was so resourceful, he was so clever. And because she had this vague feeling that he might have survived, I had built upon that and, as a child, had a fantasy that I would find her brother, Kalma. As I moved the brush, I felt through that curve a gesture, and that gesture gave me a tangible feeling of the person, and that put me in touch with Kalma. That made me feel my uncle. It was that tilt of the head up that made me feel him looking at the photographer and maybe saying to himself, what's going on behind that camera? I'm almost shocked by it sometimes, by the intensity of a gesture. I can't bring the person back, I realize that, but I can keep the connection alive. And that's what's important to me. Something in the repetition, something in the attempt to capture him, made me feel connected to him, and not only to him, but to others in my own past who I've lost. I chose a subject that inspires in me memories. And these memories sometimes are not connected to memories of an actual person who I have met. This project for me is connecting to someone who I haven't met and yet have feelings about. There's something of the soul that connects us to each other. There's something ineffable. I'm trying to recapture and recreate through painting, through the creative process, a connection that I have to a past that is there, but hard to touch. I can't bring the person back, I realize that, but I can keep the connection alive.